This is RTV6 News at 7, working for you. Now at 7, we're keeping a close eye on the radar and the sky. Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory tracking an intense storm right now. Good evening. I'm Rafael Sanchez. Let's get right to Kevin with a Storm Team 6 alert. Kevin, fill us in. What are we seeing behind you? Well, the thunderstorms are going to open the door to cooler temperatures for sure over the next three days. And the intense storm that you're talking about now sits just to the west then of the areas of Kokomo, north and east of Lafayette near Rossville. I'm going to show you the three threats here. Damaging wind and large hail would be the main threats from the storm itself. To the radar, it's pretty much the only storm. It's held together for quite a while, though. We'll zoom to the north. It's now left Tippecanoe County, just south of Delphi, right near Rossville. Moving to the south and east, it'll be between Frankfurt and Kokomo as it makes its move toward Tipton. And we look into this. There's some hail with this. It's shown rotation in the past, and I bring that up because a rotating thunderstorm more likely to have the ability to sustain itself for a longer period of time and produce severe weather. There's the slight risk. I think it would be on an isolated basis that we see these strong storms out ahead of a cold front that still has to move through central Indiana. Raphael? Kevin, thank you so much. At this moment, a section of US 36 in Avon in Hendricks County is still closed after a crash involving 11 vehicles. Two people killed in that accident. At least three others are hurt. Investigators believe a dump truck may have started the chain reaction crash near 625 East around 4 this afternoon. A school bus also involved in that pileup. The bus itself did sustain a very small amount of damage as a result of the accident itself. Uh, thankfully, they had just dropped off their last students, so there were no children on that bus. And I know the school corporation here in Avon made sure they got that information out to families here in our community. RTV6 will bring you the very latest updates as we learn new information tonight on the news at 11 as well as the RTV6 app. An Indianapolis mom says a loophole in the law could be to blame for what she calls dangerous conditions at a gym daycare. Katie Lyman says she worked in the kids club at the LA Fitness on Southport Road on the south side of Indianapolis. Uh, Katie says at one point she was watching 17 children by herself and snapped pictures of broken toys, hair and what she called dirty conditions in the kids club. She says she brought her concerns to gym management multiple times, but not much changed. The Indiana Family and Social Services Administration says child cares are exempt if they care for children less than four hours per day and not in consecutive days. That means gym daycares are not inspected by the state, nor do they have to follow health and safety regulations like child to staff ratios, CPR, and safe sleeping training. Katie says it's calling this a loophole and believes parents need to know about this all the time. I don't think they know that there aren't any codes to keep up on. There's no one in monitoring the cleanliness. Um, I don't think they know that. Uh, Katie tells RTV6, of course, that we left a business card at the LA Fitness on Southport Road location. We also called and emailed the LA Fitness Media Relations Office, and we have not heard back. Uh, Katie says she was fired after two and a half weeks on the job. She posted her concerns about the kids' club's conditions on Facebook. Her post now shared more than 300 times. Literally, no clue tonight at 7. That's what state police are saying about the possible whereabouts of a 10-year-old girl from Gas City. Skyly Carmack has been missing now since four Saturday afternoon. State police taking over the investigation. Skyly is five feet tall, weighs about 100 pounds, with blonde hair and blue eyes. Police say she was last seen wearing a black shirt with the Super Mario Brothers characters Mario and Luigi. She was also wearing black pants. If you have any information about her whereabouts, you're asked to call police. That number, 765-674-22. 78. We're working to learn more about what led to a shooting on the north side of Indianapolis that left a woman dead and a three-year-old child injured. Police were called to Hovey Street near 33rd and Keystone around 3 this morning. The woman died at the hospital. Investigators say a bullet grazed the child. Indiana is getting more money to help prevent and detect drug overdoses. The Centers for Disease Control is giving the state health department a three-year, $21 million grant. The money will be used to collect data on overdoses from emergency rooms. The information will be used to create prevention programs. The funds will also pay to improve the state's prescription drug monitoring program. 
and other efforts. Residents at a Westside Mobile Home Park are getting much needed help tonight after a story that first uncovered right here by RTV6. The 70 families who own their trailers inside the I-70 Mobile Home Park are being forced from their homes after the landowners sent a notice saying the park's parent company did not want to pay for $100,000 in upgrades to the park's water pipes. Instead, the water will be shut off and residents have to find a new place to live by October the 15th. Tonight, several organizations stepped in to assist those residents after seeing their story on RTV6. Oftentimes, folks like this feel like they don't have a voice, and, and so their story was shared, and they were given some power in that because then other people were able to respond to a need and try to help. And, and had we not known that, that this existed, you know, we wouldn't have known that they needed help. But tonight on RTV 60s at 11, we check in with residents to see if they're any closer to figuring out their future plans, including where they will live next. If you missed today's hearing to discuss a possible increase to your IPL bill, you still have time to weigh in on that proposal. The company is asking for a series of rate hikes spread out over seven years. Bills would go up between 1.8 and 1.3 percent between next year and the year 2026. Another public meeting will be held at 6 p.m. on September the 10th at the Schweitzer Student Center on the IU Indy campus. That's one week from today. And Duke Energy also wants to raise rates. It's proposing a 15.5% increase over two years. A public hearing on that plan will be held Monday, September the 9th in the Carmel High School Auditorium. That meeting will also start at 6 p.m. Tonight, working for you, RTV6 shining a light on neighbors left, as you can see, in the dark. Uh, people who live along College Avenue between 38th and 42nd Streets say the lights, street lights have been out for months. Jared Hall reached out to IPL about the issue. He says he was first told the lights needed to be disconnected temporarily because of the red line construction for safety reasons. Now that the red line is up and running, Jared says he reached out once again, but he was given different explanations. He's worried about his family and his neighbor's safety. I've seen a lot of residents walking up and down the street uh, with their lights on on their phone just so they can uh, see where they're going and maybe feel a little bit more safe than walking on the sidewalk and having somebody possibly jump out at them or something like that. PL tells RTV6 that there's still a lot of red line post-construction work to be done. The utility company says a meeting is scheduled to develop the next steps to repair underground cables and to get the lights back on. If you have a problem and need help getting answers for you or your family, contact us at our website, working for you at rtv6.com. Coming up on the news at 7, Hurricane Dorian no longer on track to devastate parts of the U.S. mainland, but the storm did not spare everyone. But first, let's check in with Kevin. And the lone storm, a strong one with heavy rainfall, some gusty winds and hail between Rossville now and nosing its way toward Tipton as this drifts to the south and east. Will there be more storms and what does it mean for tomorrow? That's coming up. Working for you. This is RTV6 News at 7. Working for you. Now at 7 to that boat tragedy in Southern California, 34 people presumed dead when the dive ship they were on caught fire while they slept. ABC's Romina Puga is in Santa Barbara where rescuers say that search operation is now a recovery effort. The sad announcement Tuesday, authorities suspending the search for survivors of the dive boat that burst into flames over Labor Day weekend. Officials say there's no indication that anyone below deck escaped when the fire erupted early Monday. The 33 passengers and one crew member who were asleep at the time are presumed dead. Officials have recovered 20 bodies so far and found several others within the wreckage, but they're not able to recover their remains until they stabilize the boat. They say the bodies will have to be identified through DNA. The humanity um, of this is, is very evident the, the broad impact, the devastating impact on so many families and so many people and on this community is evident. And that is certainly very troubling. Authorities say it appears the exit and escape hatch were blocked by fire, trapping those 34 people in the sleeping quarters. A younger sister of the crew member inside expressing her grief. 
all the families, like I, my heart is with every single one of those families, every single one of those people that have lost their lives with this. The five surviving crew members have submitted written statements to officials. Those have not yet been released and authorities still haven't commented on the cause of the fire. Romina Puga, ABC News, Santa Barbara, California. Hurricane Dorian is now on track to approach the eastern coastline of Florida later tonight. That storm has weakened to a category two, which is good for people on the U.S. mainland. But Dorian devastated the Bahamas, as you can see, buildings heavily damaged, large areas of land are underwater, and at least five people have been killed. The storm surge was strong enough to push boats ashore and pick up vehicles. Dorian is the strongest storm to ever hit the Bahamas. What the world needs to know is that we're entering our third night uh, of a hurricane that's caused unprecedented damage uh, and destruction in the Grand Bahama. Our hearts and our hearts, thoughts and prayers are with all of those that are out, out there still missing. Um, and, and to the young men, you know, and women that, that are risking their lives to locate and save them, the island will need all the help it can get as soon as possible. And this remains a developing story. The governor of Florida says while the current track looks encouraging for the state, he is still urging people to be patient and vigilant. I'll show you, Raphael, kind of a worldly view, so to speak, of uh, all of the tropical storms. So you've got Juliet, that's a hurricane in the Pacific, tropical storm in northwest Gulf of Mexico, Dorian, which we were just talking about. And then this is an unnamed storm at this time, but may well become a tropical storm soon. What was a quiet early part of the hurricane season, a lot more active now. Well, as you look at the radar, I'm doing the same. Your eyes are drawn right to the center there. Just go straight north of Indianapolis. This is just west of 31, west of the Kokomo Bypass, headed toward Tipton County. This is weakening. It was stronger earlier, and for now, it is starting to lose strength as it drops from Rossville to Tipton. Until a cold front goes through, we'll at least keep the potential for additional thunderstorms with an isolated severe storm, potentially. 79 in Crawfordsville, 78 rain-cooled degrees in Peru. It's even cooler as you go toward Logansport, Monticello because of the recent rain. Whenever we talk about storms, good reminder, the Storm Shield app is free for your smartphone, Android, or uh, uh, iPhone and uh, is like a weather radio to your phone. From Indianapolis Northeast, that seems to be the best chance for additional showers and thunderstorms, at least in the short term, as the cold front rolls through tonight. An isolated thunderstorm may continue through the overnight. But once we wake up, we'll wake up to this. What is a cool, dry pattern? Temperatures tomorrow at 77, a little cooler Thursday. Temperature on Friday still very comfortable. And overnight lows will follow in the 50s most mornings within the seven-day planner. Tomorrow by noon 74, just a mixture of clouds and sunshine. Any clouds that pop up are just fair weather clouds. You'll notice the difference. We had a stronger southwest wind today. It will be out of the north or northwest during the day tomorrow, leading to the parade of cooler days that will start to filter into central Indiana. Friday night football, mark another one down. Should be a nice night for football for those playing and for those of you going to watch. Seven-day planner put together the chance for a shower or thunderstorm appears on Sunday. That's our next best opportunity, but you can see it's not a great chance, just a 20% chance a week from today. We'll be back in the 80s, but not until then. So you called it a parade of cooler days. How do I sign up to be the grand marshal of that parade? You're it. You're right? the first one to ask. Kevin Gray, right? <laughs> and we'll all sign up to be in the parade with you. Thank you, Kevin. Next on your Hiring Hoosiers Report, a career program that's taking students, as you can see, to new heights. So the idea kind of sparked when one of my friends had taken off her card holder and put on a phone grip and then lost her cards. A new prevent invention that can prevent that from happening to you thanks to a central Indiana woman. See how it works and how that is also creating jobs next on the News at 7. Delicious. <laughs> RTV6 connecting you to endless career opportunities across central Indiana. No matter your goals, interests, or your education level, Hiring Hoosiers has something just for you. And this evening, we're taking to the skies and you are clear for a takeoff. Students in Greenwood are learning how to fly. RTV6's Erin Lish explains how this program is helping young people go from the classroom to the career in the aviation industry. 
From single engine Cessnas to Airbuses like the one behind me here, students are learning all about planes, so someday they can help you get to your destination. Remember what happens when you get more induced lift? Students at Central 9 Career Center are laying down the groundwork to become the pilots of the future. Whenever you're going to turn, Whatever you think you're going to do with your hands, you just add a little bit of foot right before you do it. In the Aviation Flight and Operations program, students will become familiar with aviation tech, the history of the industry, exploring the current aviation environment and careers. Just flight, uh, being in the air, it seems like it's really relaxing. On top of it, it's just, it makes good money. And as the Indy Airport averages 145 flights a day, instructors say there's a major need for pilots. There are airlines right now that really are canceling flights because they don't have enough pilots. So it's vitally important to train a lot of pilots and that pipeline to get them to the career field is pretty long. So anytime we can take off that to get them into the pilot seat is that much better. They will earn dual credits for the work in this program. The plane is going to yaw as it's rolling. Students say they'll also take away skills like problem solving, communication, and situational awareness, which they will use not only in flight, but throughout their lives. It's not just a career thing. It helps you earn a lot of skills that are useful. Working for you, Aaron Lish, RTV6. Aaron, thank you so much. Students who complete the program at Central 9 will have nearly a full semester of credits in any aviation major that they choose to pursue. A young college student from Indiana is also up and coming and an entrepreneur and business owner. RTV6's Lauren Casey found the invention from a 20-year-old is creating jobs for many Hoosiers. The socket locket is an adhesive card holder. Um, where you can hold up to one, two, or three cards securely in place. Cicero native Katie Gelhausen is a 20-year-old college student, and like any college student, carries around her phone and school ID wherever she goes. You can pair it with your own phone grip and combine the two. So and so a device like this socket locket is really handy, and she found it's something her friends need. The catch? It didn't exist at first. Um, so the idea kind of sparked when one of my friends had taken off her card holder and put on a phone grip and then lost her cards. There was nothing out there like the socket locket. Katie is an entrepreneurship student at High Point University in North Carolina. She came up with the idea for the socket locket and at 19 years old, took action. So it all started with basically just a sketch. She did research, made sketches, earned a prototyping scholarship and is now patent pending. When looking for places to manufacture her product, she looked back home to Indiana, a place where she could be involved in the production process. It just seemed like fate that it was only 20 miles up the road. And that's where Mike Lieger with Progressive Plastics comes in. But Katie's been a, a powerhouse. Uh, she's very creative. Mike and Progressive Plastics decided to take on the socket locket project. The Elwood manufacturer is a full service custom injection molding company specializing in medical, military and aerospace products. And inventors are especially important to this local businessman. She has created something out of nothing and that something demands attention. Uh, and that uh, affects every facet, facet of the manufacturing process. Uh, there's prototype tooling, we've got assembly workers, we've got production operators, tooling people that all are touched by a new product. The success and demand for Katie's product not only impacts her business, but Mike's as well, allowing him to hire more Hoosiers. This is going to end up requiring us to increase our, uh, our staff probably 10 to 15%. Not only providing jobs to his community in Elwood, but also helping his employees feel fulfilled in their work. We want to make sure they understand that their reach goes much further than Elwood. Uh, that there are people all around this country uh, that are picking up the products that you've produced. And I think that means a lot uh, in terms of somebody being able to get out of bed in the morning. Lauren, thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow morning on Good Morning Indiana. To learn more about the socket, locket, jobs with progressive plastics, or any of the many career possibilities you see here on RTV6, go to our website, hiringhoosiers.com. As the Colts prepare to kick off the season without Andrew Luck, the mayor of Indianapolis taking time to honor the former QB, and the city asking you to do the same next on the News at 7.
Did you know it's Andrew Luck Day in Indianapolis? Mayor Joe Hogshead made the declaration. It was just has been over a week since Luck abruptly retired from football. They're encouraged to honor the former Colts quarterback on social media, sharing why you're thankful he's part of the Indianapolis community using the hashtag thank you, Andrew Luck. Thank you, Andrew. A shrinking area, what was a cluster of thunderstorms, now down to just some general rainfall sitting between Kokomo and Tipton. That will continue to move to the south and east. Additional isolated thunderstorms, couple strong, could develop ahead of a cold front button. Doors wide open to beautiful stretch of weather starting tomorrow. Uh, Kevin, thank you so much and thank you for being a part of RTV6. Our next newscast tonight at 11. Good night.